But ultimately, my advice for someone like Erock on tech is stop wasting your time with something that you're trying to do all these fixes and workarounds for. The product should not be doing that to begin with. Just circumvent the problem altogether and get a different CPU and architecture. That would be my advice. That's what I've done. And I have just been having a great experience ever since. Relax, relax. I'm not actually taking the Intel CPU and putting it in the trash can, okay? But it does represent my current mindset, which is I'm done with Intel in my main PC, and I am switching back officially to AMD's AM5 platform. And I do want to briefly talk about that in today's video, but I also want to talk about an update on the overall Intel latency issue, lag issue, and honestly, all the other issues. Now, if you haven't seen my last video, I do recommend going back and checking it out because it will definitely give a lot of context as to what I'm about to say. You might have noticed that I played a clip from Tech Yes City. In that video, he saw my video, gave me a shout out. Thank you, Brian, for that. I do appreciate that, man. And he gave me some really solid advice. And I'm taking that advice because he's right. I shouldn't have to sit here and, you know, basically bash my head against the wall trying to get a CPU to do what it should do. And that is perform and perform reliably and stably and all those things, right? Now, with all that being said, let's talk about some of the updates on the Intel situation. So I posted my last video, why I switched to Intel and why I may go back to AMD. And I talked about the problems I had with AMD in the beginning of AM5, what led me over to Intel and now why I was considering switching back to AMD. And now here we are, I am switching back to AMD and so far the experience has been rock solid. But in terms of Intel, I didn't just make that video and say, okay, I'm done and walked away. I actually continue to try to troubleshoot the Intel situation. And overall, here's where I landed. When it was all said and done, I read through all of your comments. I took all of your suggestions. A lot of you gave me suggestions that frankly, I have already tried. And I even said in the video, hey, I tried this. And you still said, hey, did you try that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I said it in the video. But anyway, it's all good. I appreciate you leaving the comment. I appreciate you watching the video and showing support. So it's all good. But ultimately, I went through all the comments and here's where I landed. I made sure everything, and I mean everything was up to date. Okay, my Windows was up to date. Every app connected to the to the garbage Windows App Store was up to date. The BIOS was up to date. The GPU drivers were up to date. I downloaded Intel's software utility and made sure any updates that that could give me, I had. I made sure every update I could have was applied to the system. Then I went to the BIOS and I loaded optimized defaults. And then I made sure that XMP was turned off. I made sure the iGPU was disabled. And then I made sure that the E cores were disabled. And then I went back to the application I talked about in my previous video, CPU Unparked. And I made sure that all of my cores were unparked. Now, after doing all of this, there was a noticeable improvement to the lag and stutter that I was experiencing. However, it was still there. It was very minor but it was still there, I could still notice it, it was less than perfect, and even if I did all of that and it completely eliminated all of my lag and all of my stutter, I, I mean, what good is that? A user shouldn't have to go through and do all of those things just to get the CPU, not the lag and not to stutter. And furthermore, what kind of value is that? Because you're being charged for all of those things, right? So when I turn off XMP, that's money wasted because I was charged extra for that RAM. And presumably I was charged extra from Intel for their memory controller and higher RAM speeds, right? And then I turned off the iGPU, you best believe you're getting charged for the iGPU. And then I turned off the E-cores, you're definitely being charged for the E-cores. And so even if turning off all of those things fixed my problem, the fact remains that was money wasted down the drain. Not only did it not fix my problem, even if it were to fix my problem, it was a waste of money. So yeah, I definitely was like, I'm done with Intel. I'm definitely going back to AMD. Now here's the interesting thing. So I published my video on April the 8th, first thing in the morning, like 9 a.m. or something. And then later that day, videocards.com ran a story talking about Intel instability with Tekken 8. And then that gained a lot of traction, a lot of other news outlets started covering it. It was all over the headlines. And then a lot of people started saying, hey, it's not just a Tekken issue. Hogwarts Legacy isn't running and all these other games aren't running. Oh, and by the way, I'm getting this error that says my GPU is out of memory. And then Nvidia had to make a statement saying, whoa, your GPU is not out of memory. That's not our fault. That's not our problem. This is a CPU problem. Contact Intel. So the fact that Nvidia came out 
and basically was putting the spotlight on Intel, that also says a lot. Now, in addition to all of that, you also have the problem where gamers have started to find out that motherboard manufacturers are not running Intel's default specs out of the box. They are basically trying to tune the CPU to look better and clock higher out of the box as the default spec. In fact, Jay's Two Cents made a full video on this a few weeks ago talking about Asus multi-core enhancement. And what's funny is that I actually made a video on that and I showcased that feature first talking about enforce all limits versus auto let BIOS optimize the AI feature. I made a video on that before Jay did, but nobody watched my video. Anyway, that information got out there and now everyone was starting to speculate. Okay, well, you know, maybe it's not exactly an Intel issue. Maybe it's actually a motherboard issue. And maybe these motherboard manufacturers are just pushing the chip too hard. And is it only Asus or are other motherboard manufacturers doing the same thing? And sure enough, other motherboard manufacturers are in fact doing the same thing. And speaking of Jay's two cents one more time, he recently made a newer video talking about this issue once again. And he showed on screen for certain motherboard manufacturers where you can go on the BIOS to change certain settings to be more in line with the Intel specifications. But these are settings you have to manually set for yourself. Now to give credit where credit is due and to the best of my knowledge, Asus is the first motherboard manufacturer to try and address this issue with a BIOS update. Asus updated the BIOS and introduced something called Intel Baseline Profile. And it's basically exactly what it sounds like. It is an update that allows the user to now run their CPU closer to the Intel rated specifications. Now, notice I said the word closer because you would think this would be exact, but it's actually not. PC Gamer ran an entire article on this and here's an excerpt from that article and I will have this linked down below in the video description. However, the significant thing to note here is that Asus still isn't implementing all of Intel's stock power limits unless you go in and force them all manually. For the many thousands of PC gamers who don't like to mess about with the BIOS, let alone update it, the change implemented by Asus aren't necessarily going to a address the stability issues. And now this is something that honestly has me scratching my head. Number one, the Intel baseline profile is still not the default setting on an Asus motherboard. I checked it myself. You have to manually find it and implement it and then restart in order to choose this option. Number two, it's not even inside Asus multi-core enhancement, which is where all the other profiles are. If you want to enforce all limits, if you want to do AI optimize, if you want to, you know, limit it to 90C or whatever, it's all under Asus multi-core core enhancement, but the Intel baseline profile is not. It's actually outside of the multi-core enhancement and it's listed right above it. And honestly, I missed it the first time. You might not think I would, but I was assuming, oh, it's going to be in multi-core enhancement. So I made a beeline for multi-core enhancement, opened the drop down menu, and I'm like, where, where in the world is the baseline profile? And it was right above it the whole time. And of course, the most obvious question here is, why even introduce the baseline profile if it's still not matching the Intel specifications? I don't know. I don't understand. I really don't. Anyway, I played around with the Intel baseline profile for part of one day, give or take. And the only thing I noticed is that the clock speeds went down in the BIOS. Intel optimized default settings have the 14900K listed at about 5.5 gigahertz. And after you implement Intel baseline profile, it drops down to about 5.3 gigahertz, which is to be expected. You're going to lose some performance there because you're not pushing the chip as hard. That's to be expected. I played Played around in the Windows 11 desktop environment, I did not have any lag, stutter, or crashes, or anything of that nature. However, it's important to understand, I was only able to play around with this for about a day, maybe a little less than that. So what happens after two, three, four days of usage? I don't know, I haven't played with it that long. I can at least confirm nothing catastrophic happened from the update, so it's definitely worth trying. If you have an Asus motherboard, if you have an Intel CPU, Definitely install the update, play around with Intel Baseline Profile, and let me know in the comment section what your experience is like. I'm very curious to know. Hey everyone, a quick update from the editing bay. I forgot to show you exactly what the Intel Baseline Profile says in the BIOS whenever you enable it. So here's one picture with a description of the Intel Baseline Profile, and then here's the other picture that shows you exactly what settings are changed whenever you go through with the final restart and applying the actual changes. Furthermore, while editing this video, Intel has released an official statement on the matter 
Center. And basically, Intel is officially blaming motherboard vendors for allowing Intel CPUs to operate outside recommended specifications. Now, Intel is still investigating the root cause of all these issues, but for now, they are putting the blame on motherboard manufacturers and they are planning to make a secondary statement later on. I will put the link to the video cards article down below in the video description if you want to check it out for yourself. Now, with all that being said, I switched back to AMD, so let's talk about that. So I am using the AMD Ryzen 7800X 3D, and for my motherboard currently, I am using an Asus ROG Strix X670 EF gaming motherboard. And for my RAM, I'm using DDR5, two sticks of 16 gigabytes each, so a total of 32 gigabytes. And I do have everything clocked at 6,000 megahertz. And it does have an AMD Expo profile on it. I enabled it, no issues at all, no crashing or anything like that. And the system is reliable is stable. I've been using it now for several days and I've had literally zero issues with it. So I can honestly say that so far, every issue I've had with AMD or AM5 in the past seems like it's been corrected. And I do plan to do a full follow-up video talking about before you buy AM5, one year later, my thoughts and opinions and all of that. But give me some time. I want to play with the system a little bit longer before I make a final, you know, video expressing all of my thoughts and experiences with it. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice my language said for my motherboard, I am currently using the Asus motherboard. And the reason why I said that is because I am planning to switch off to a micro ATX motherboard. And as a creator, USBs really matter to me. So a lot of the micro ATX boards available don't really have a lot of USBs, but I went out and found a really good deal on this micro ATX board. It is from Gigabyte Aurorus. It's the B650M Elite AX and I have no idea how it's gonna work for me. I know it has a ton of USB ports, so that's gonna come in handy and it's well reviewed and it's gonna be a good micro ATX board to put in my new build. I'm building a new PC and the case that I chose is the Tower 300 and unfortunately it cannot support an ATX motherboard. And now let me try to wrap everything up. So number one, I am back on the AMD platform and I am using AM5 and so far it has been truly a rock solid experience. No lag, no stutter. My editing timeline is perfectly smooth and my gaming experience is rock solid. No crashes, nothing. Pretty much it seems like every issue I had with AM5 and all four of the videos I made, it seems like most of that has now been alleviated. And I am looking forward to doing my final before you buy AM5 video, but again, give me some more time to really kind of flesh that out. Now, if you're sitting here wondering, hey, you just bought all that and then you turned around and bought a micro ATX motherboard and you're changing out your case. Like, why are you doing all of that? Excellent question. The reason why is because I got hit with a wave of creativity. A lot of people look at YouTubers, oh, he's just a YouTuber, a tech tuber, an influencer and all that. But really, I like to say we're most of us, at least me anyway, we're creators first. We want to create. In the back, I have a PC that I love and adore, and I put so many hours and so much money into it. It's a custom Super Mario themed PC with Charles Martinet's autograph on it. And anybody who's ever seen it talks about how amazing it is. I did a full video on it and nobody watched it. And that's fine, it's whatever. But I look at this thing every day and I realize how incredible it is. I also did a couple of more custom PCs that are Harry Potter related for a good friend of mine. And I never made a video on it, but I took some pictures. You can see it on the screen right now. And I realized, why do I not have any Anything like that for myself. I have all of these parts at my disposal. I have all of this creativity and capability of making something for myself. So why not? So I decided to go with a new theme. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. My Patreon members will get a sneak peek on that first and shout out to all my Patreon members. You all are incredible. Thank you for the continued support. Ultimately, I'm going to do a full theme about something that I'm super passionate about. And unfortunately, the Tower 300 cannot support an ATX motherboard. So I will be using the micro ATX motherboard. And now in the long run, what I will probably do is assuming AMD releases a 9800X 3D, I will purchase that, put that in my main PC, take my current 7800X 3D along with this Asus X670EF motherboard and make that my test bench. And then I will have a 7800X 3D in the test bench and a 9800X 3D in my main PC. And that's of course, assuming AMD actually releases the 9800X 3D. Now, what about Intel? Well, for now, I will use it in my test bench. In the long run, maybe I'll have a secondary test bench and then I'll have one for Intel, one for AMD. I guess that would probably be ideal as a creator, or maybe I'll sell it or give it to a friend who needs it, 
or maybe I'll just keep it around for spare parts. I don't know yet. Overall, my experience with Intel during the first couple of months was rock solid, it was phenomenal, and I truly saw how capable the system could be. But once the lag and stutter came along, I was just so done with it at that point. And on top of all of that, you know, Intel is obviously working on the 15th generation and there will be no more chips for the current generation of Z690 motherboards, Z790 motherboards, it's done. And because of that, a lot of people call it a dead platform. And I did actually list my 14700K and 14900K for sale on Facebook Marketplace just to see what kind of engagement I would get. I got more DMs on the Facebook Marketplace than I do comments on my YouTube videos. And even with all the controversy with Intel right now, people still have a strong interest in purchasing Intel products. I decided to keep the 14700K and I did part ways with the 14900K. I was open to keeping one or the other. I didn't really care which one. In this case, somebody really wanted the 14900K. I knew I wasn't gonna use it, so there you go. And the 14700K is more than capable of, of being suitable for a test bench. And so that's currently where I'm standing on things. And I'm sure some of you are gonna be upset with me and disagree with me, particularly the fanboys. Now, speaking of fanboys, if you wanna see something and very funny. Go check out Nick Tech's latest video of AMD versus Intel. Absolutely hilarious. And I love what Nick Tech is doing over there. So shout out to him. Link will be in the video description below. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed, consider joining Patreon. It's only a dollar. And until next time, E-Rock out.